good morning i am father gilbert a salesian priest from the province of calcutta at nidiga don bosco calcutta i am given the topic some elements or dimensions of a good homily in the mass and i am going to present to you 10 basic principles or dimensions of a good homily uh, the first dimension uh, before i present this dimensions let me tell you Uh, these dimensions are meant both for the celebrant who preaches the homily and also for the congregation the listeners or participants of the mass uh, they uh, combine together in these dimensions so the first dimension or first element for a good homily is every homily is an integral part of liturgy this is very important uh, homily is not something outside the mass or something externally fit into the mass it is internal and integral element of the mass uh, when i was young uh, there used to be people in the church in our parish when the homily begins they would just walk out stay outside either for smoking normally men or for chatting when the homily is over they would come back i think they would used to think uh, homily is not an important element that you can skip it no homily is an essential element and part of the liturgy the mass number 2 language all understand homily should be in a language where all understand so even the celebrants have studied theology and theological jargons are used in their seminary studies when it comes to homily he should be able to articulate in the language every common person understands even uneducated people should understand so success of a good homily depends upon how the people understand your homily the language and the articulation that means it is an art it is an art of communication so uh, pope uh, john paul the first albino luciani who used to say that one elderly priest to tell him this way remember when you preach that even the little old lady sitting at the back of the church who does not go to school must be able to understand your homily so even our old grandmas and grandpas who never went to school never learned anything should be able to understand your homily that is the success so homily should be in the language of the hearers not a forum to parade your knowledge and your vocabulary which they don't understand that's the second thing third the duration how long the homily should be for a good homily in the mass it should not be too long it should not be too short ideal would be a homily should have 10 to 12 minutes it should not be too long pope francis in evangelii gaudium says uh, it should be in line with the rhythm and proportion to the liturgy that means uh, if the mass is 1 hour and your homily is half an hour to 45 minutes or if the mass is 45 minutes and your homily goes to half an hour it is not proportionate to the entire length of the mass so it should be in proportion and rhythm of the entire liturgy it should not be too long and too short your homily should not be too short in the 45 minutes of mass hardly 2 minutes or it should be half an hour in the 45 minutes of mass that should be in proportion to the timing of the liturgy um, number 4 it should be leading one to prayer and reflection homily is not an entertainment is not a discussion forum it is not a political speech it is not a lecture what it is homily is part of liturgy which is prayer mass is prayer homily is not outside this prayer form it is also part of that entire mass that is prayer so it should lead one to reflection it should lead one to prayer and in this connection it is very important to remember it is not the preacher who preaches or the celebrant who preaches it is god who preaches through the celebrant we are all instruments in the hands of god it is god who speaks uh, through the voice 
of the celebrant so you should be listened and be attentive to the voice of god number 5 the content of the homily what should a good homily contain and it should have basically most important based on the word of god that means the readings at least one of the readings it should be based on the reading many major content it should be also connected to the life of the people that means connected to the real life situation of the people it should be also uh, connected to elements of ccc catechism of the catholic church there are four pillars of the faith creed sacraments commandments and prayer there should be some link to the elements of our faith it should be also linked to the eucharist that we celebrate so that it should not look like distinct and different from the eucharist it should float from the eucharist and float towards the eucharist that is within the eucharist so this homily should have some link to the eucharist pope benedict the 16 says in sacramentum caritatis uh, number 46 every homily should have catechetical aim what does it mean the entire content of the homily should nourish and educate the faithful it is a moment an adult faith formation should have a catechetical aim so the content should be that number 6 the stories used in the homily many people ask can there be stories narrated in the homily well stories are living symbolisms of human life especially relevant symbolisms of our present day life every story has symbols of life So in that sense every homily can have a story but that story should be interpreted and decoded in the light of the word of god if it is not done well the stories can be harmful it is good to use this stories because they are human life situations human life interpretations jesus used stories in his preaching and he preached nothing but stories so says the bible but there is a danger the danger is if you don't use the stories properly linked and interpreted in the light of the word of god people can get a completely different message and secondly if your narration of the stories take major part of the homily and you spend very little time to the word of god proper then you are not doing justice to the entire homily so proper place and proper timing of the story for the sake of word of god this is very important for us to understand sign of good homily then number 7 pope francis always speaks in evangelii gaudium evangelii gaudium dedicates one entire chapter on homily he says simplicity of homily it should not be complicated and complex you should not speak too many points in the homily should be according to him a message a sentiment an idea a message this is what he speaks in uh, 157 in evangelii gaudium a message a sentiment an idea so people carry home one message an idea a sentiment a feeling so that is the simplicity of the homily so that people carry home that particular message uh, this is according to pope francis in evangelii gaudium there should not be too many things to confuse the listeners uh, you not you need not take or the celebrant need not take uh, everything of the reading one idea from the reading there are so many ideas in every reading so many points are there one cannot explain everything and interpret everything during the limited time of the homily so one idea develop that and one message from there develop that and one feeling sentiment to carry home and this is what pope francis says you know uh, an idea a sentiment an image a good homily an old teacher once told me francis says should have an idea a sentiment an image number 8 positivity sometimes during the homily uh, people are criticized sometimes there is so much of negativity uh, when you listen to a homily a good homily is giving you a positive nourishment 
a positive feeling a positive energy it's not that you should go with a feel good attitude but a feeling that takes you forward to look forward to in life with lots of hope and enthusiasm and that is what he call positivism not with the laments and not with the criticisms not with the negativity and ill feeling homily should always send across a positive attitude a positive thrust a positive energy to carry home this is what pope francis mentions in uh, evangelii gaudium number 9 especially the role of the congregation listen this is the best part of the mass to listen attentively listen attentively to the word of god and continuation of the listening of that word of god interpretation of the word of god to the homily the preaching and you are not listening to the celebrant you are not listening <coughs> to the person you are listening to god himself it is god who preaches through the celebrant and listen attentively without prejudice without any biases one should not have any ill feeling when you listen to the homily of a preacher and number 10 the last one practice practice uh, homily or mass does not end with the mass mass in fact begins even after the mass when the mass ends the celebrant says go in peace proclaiming uh, glorifying the lord by your lives that means we need to glorify the lord continue to glorify by our life how do i glorify the lord the best way to glorify the lord in our daily lives after the mass is practicing and doing what we have heard and listen to during the homily so we need to actualize translate those words we have heard into action then only the homily becomes complete in the mass after narrating the good samaritan story and preaching a very good lesson from the good samaritan story the people who listened told jesus well said well put master but jesus said in reply go and do likewise sometimes after the homily people come and tell the celebrant very good homily very good story they are all probably feel good type of attitude you have created you should not remain there unless those feel good attitudes and listening to that positivity translated to action no homily is complete take home the message and try to practice the message then we can say your homily or the words cease they and deeds begin in your life thank you very much next time when you listen to the homily please pay attention and take it home the message and try to implement actualize in your life then the words become deeds you don't become hearers of the word but doers of the word that is the purpose of every homily and integral part of liturgy the mass thank you very much